a normal person, someone with high standards, would have deleted the app right there rather than hop on a bus to meet up with what they were very, what were very likely men with sharp knives and a taste for kidneys. But me, I was already getting dressed before she'd finished that sentence. It's not that I believed the silly app's claims at serving my hopes and dreams on a silver platter. I honestly expected another shoe shop job at best. But, well, it'll be worth a laugh at the very least. I chose, I choose to trust in science. What is my dream anyway? What the heck, let's do this. Like I always say, go with the flow. Hmm. I choose, it'll be worth a laugh at the very least. I chose to trust in the science. What is my dream anyway? Um. What is my dream anyway? As much as I genuinely enjoyed being a lifeguard, I can't say I found true direction in life yet. I'd assumed I never would, honestly. When I was young, yeah, I guess I had hopes, I had dreams, maybe even what Iris called a spirit. We got spirit! After things went south for my family, I learned to put all that aside, but assuming Iris wasn't out for my kidneys, what if it's not too late? So I thought, one last time, one last time, I'll have some optimism, some faith. And as I came to realize weeks later, it turns out I was right to have faith in my spirit. So if I have, cool, so I've got one, okay, I, I'm assuming it's gonna auto calibrate. This is, this is one, this is one, and this is zero, so we'll see how this goes. I wonder what this new job's gonna be. The bus drops me off, oddly enough, not very far from Juniper's office building, although my destination isn't nearly as upscale as that. This is, well, it's, it's a strip mall. Strip malls are relics of 19xx, places where a random assortment of weird little businesses jam as many of themselves into a type of a space as possible. For instance, I'm seeing a dentist, a used bookstore called The Whole Story, wow, okay, an arcade, a fast food joint, and a boarded up health spa once called Lattes and Enemas, which sounds, uh... Hey, listen! What? Hey, listen! <laughs> that was on purpose. I know that was on purpose. Hey, listen! What do you think? I think that's two things no human being should ever combine. No, I mean about your future place of work. I'm desperately hoping we're not talking about the same thing. Which one of these businesses exactly am I working at? I don't know anything about oral hygiene or old books, and I'd rather not be a fry cook. I mean, I want to be a cook. Maybe not a fry cook, but I'd love to be a cook. The one in the middle, silly. What, behind the arcade? It is the arcade. Huh? Trust me on this. I reference and cross-reference and cross-reference your personality details, personal history, and social media connections. This is your dream job. I mean, my figure, if you're playing this game, you're probably a gamer to some degree. So whoever is... I mean, know your audience. They're playing a video game, clearly. Chances are, working at arcade is not that big of a stretch. Stretch of a desirable job. My dream job? Really? With... Wow. That much accuracy, yes. I should probably explain my confusion. Arcades are big businesses in the entertainment sector. Pro gamers are celebs. Five-star arcades are social hotspots. It's always been popular with the mainstream. But, well... Restaurants are popular too, right? And for everybody who opens one, hoping to be the next Iron Chef... <laughs> TM. I love that trademark. A dozen more shut down in failure. Arcade competition is fierce. Paydays range from peanuts to gold. And sure, those who can make it can secure fame and fortune, but those who don't, well... No wonder Iris sees this as a dream job. Video games weren't always this popular, though. I read an interesting article about it once. Back in the year 1980X, we narrowly avoided a serious industry crash, which would have left video games as a kid's toy fad, like hula hoops. No mainstream acceptance. For instance, one of the factors could have been a terrible game based on a kid's movie about a cute alien visitor who wanted a phone home. If this game was complete poop butts, like poop from a butt, and massively overproduced, it ruined video games for years. Fortunately, cooler heads prevailed, that game was delayed until it could be developed properly, and the crash was averted. The crisis only exists in theory now. Sometimes I wonder what it'd be like for people in the darkest timeline, where everything went wrong, are gamers considered nerds and outcasts? Are, are, are outcades vanishing points from nostalgia? I think they're kind of referencing to what actually happened in real life. But the thing is, nowadays, gamers come in all sorts, especially recently. 
especially with all of the um, gaming apps now, gamers are not just nerds and outcasts anymore. Like everyone, your mom, your parents, anyone can be a gamer now. It's not, it doesn't have nearly as much stigma, which I do remember it having. I mean, I remember, I grew up in the 80s and I know that back then, the idea of anyone who was like over 30, anyone over 30 playing video games was a really odd concept for people in the 80s. But now that we're the ones who grew up with the video games as our kids, now that we're all in our like 30s and 40s, it's not nearly as like weird at all. So yeah, the mind boggles. But make no mistake, as popular as they are, the arcade industry is a dodgy, risky prospect for a job. Plenty make a run at it, only to come up short. Considering Iris was tasked with me getting a was tasked with getting me a job I'd enjoy and keep for more than a few months, this left me a bit confused. Iris, this isn't me saying no. It's an interesting prospect, but I mean, are you sure about this? You say you're ninety nine percent sure. Right. I I I would have said that. Won't this be like my lifeguard job though? Satisfying but short lived. This arcade doesn't exactly look like a five star. It's no Deco's palace. Palace, that's that's for sure. And to be perfectly honest, I haven't set foot inside an arcade in a... Oh, I love that silhouette. 15 years? Uh, seriously? 15 years? Dude, am I a loser or what? Haven't been in an arcade for 15 years? That does not mean real life. Huh. I remember really enjoying arcades when I was a kid. I wonder why I stopped going to them. Iris interrupts. I don't know why you stopped going to them either. Apparently it's a plot point. Iris interrupts that thought, eager to show off her homework. My sources Tr say yes. Trust me, when I said I was 99.97% sure, I meant it. That's not some arbitrary number. I'm designed to be a bit silly and whimsical, but my math is deadly serious. My coders made me to be the warm, personable front of a database array that's currently laser targeted on getting you exactly what you need. Right here, right now. And when this place inevitably collapses and I lose my dream job, what makes you think that's going to happen? Because it does. It always does. I don't think your database accounts for my family curse. We've always had to, I don't know, compromise, settle, because things rarely work out. You've always had to be ready for the worst. It's why I take a stride and it's it's why I take a str things in stride these days. Does that mean you shouldn't even try? She's got you there. I open my mouth to protest and then close it. As often as my life tends to crumble out from under me, it's not like she was wrong. I still had to try. And besides, what is my dream anyway? That's what I asked before. That's what I was asking myself when I left the house this morning. I don't know what I want from life. I've been coasting aimlessly for years. When things started running downhill for my family, I had to grow up fast. Put aside silliness like wanting to be an astronaut and take what I could get. Now thanks to Iris, I've got a shot at taking something to a little better than what I usually get. I owe it to myself to try and be happy and paid, and paid, not just, not just paid. Happy and paid, not just paid. So I opted to push on through those doors and see what waited for me on the other side. Alright, let's see. Who are we gonna meet? The air conditioning hits me like a cold breeze. I'll bet one smelling of a copper and, one smelling of copper and corn chips. Look at this place, take it all in. Feel all the halogens warming your skin. Brownie points to anyone who can point out what song that what where that song is from. Um, and it's early in the morning on a weekday. It's not too packed with gamers. Although it's so packed with games, I'd probably have a hard time finding anyone anyway. At once, I'm struck by something odd. I actually recognize most of these games. Neat. Considering I haven't walked into an arcade in over a decade, that's Probably not great. Lots of vintage stuff here from the looks of it. Like, really old. Although I don't recognize that game with the stage lights and things. Maybe it's karaoke or dancing? A Japanese import? You don't know dance DDR? Oh my goodness. I am a loser. My sources say yes. Checking, that would be Showtime Stage. A collaboration of Nihana Heavy Industry Concern and Hubris Records in Germany. It won a lot of rewards. Awards. Huh. I recognize most of these. Whoa, was that seriously a Mr. Moopy's Magic Maze? That's Pac-Man, I love that. I love that, Moopy. I'm gonna have to take a look at some of these. I saw like Time time Shutters, that's like Time Crisis, 
This looks like Street Fighter. This is super cool. Pinball. Okay. Fist of Discomfort, a hybrid real-time strategy in Brawler Beat-em-Up. It's actually not that new. It's been a staple of these esports scene, esports scenes for the last eight years. Two genres I was utterly lousy at last time I checked. And over here is an old lady. <laughs> I like her look. Um, sorry ma'am, I was just talking to myself and had an overwhelming urge to complete my sentences. Thankfully, I don't think she even registered me calling her old. She looks up from her knitting, seated behind the ticket prize redemption desk, and offers a wrinkly smile. Well, hello there. Always nice to meet someone new in the funplex. The what? Francine's Arcade Funplex. Didn't you see the sign out front, dear? Well, I chose to knock off the first two words when they got knocked off the building during the storm of 1980. <laughs> now it's just the funplex, I suppose. So, how can I help you, dear? I'm digging her outfit. A funplex? Is that what? Is that when you suplex a clown? A genie in my phone set up a job interview for me. You've been in business for XX years. Is this funplex? Is that when you suplex a clown? Yes, I've heard that one before, dear. <laughs> Considering we've been open since 1970X, I've heard them all, but it's still nice to see young people with a good sense of humor, and it's nice of you to try and cheer an old lady up. Yes, I heard you call me an old lady. Uh, well, it's a factual statement, isn't it? No insult taken, dear. Please, call Please. me Francine. As in, Francine's Arcade Funplex. <laughs> Get it? Actually, thinking about it, I suppose we were originally Frederick's Arcade Funplex, named after my dear departed husband oh my my condolences sadly he died peacefully in bed some years ago if i had to go though i would want to die peacefully in bed ah uh, i'm sorry to hear that no don't be he died doing what he loved having intensely physical relations with me oh ooh, francine i like this lady Ooh. That's information I need to know. Yes. And you are? Hark Angel, ma'am. I came here looking for a job. I understand my interviewer was, uh, prearranged? Ah, yes, the computer did send me a mail about that. I'd almost forgotten. So shall we retire to the office to conduct your interview? I'd carry on out here, but it is rather noisy, isn't it? Yeah, about that. How do you deal with the constant noise anyway? Oh, eventually you just sort of learn how to filter out all the beeps and the boops. It can take weeks to become acclimated, I've found, but in the end... Done. She quirks an eyebrow. Well now, that's faster than the others. Not bad. <laughs> I literally did just block them all out. So, shall we see what you're made of? Hmm? This way, please. Francine led me down a back hallway, past public restrooms, and into a door marked employees only. It all, it takes all my restraint not to point out the extraneous apostrophe. Oh, employee apostrophe S, yes. I didn't catch that, I should have. Welcome to our little backstage oasis. I'd suggest we do this in Gavin's office, but it's a bit too untidy. I don't blame the boy, he's been so overworked lately. Please have a seat and we'll begin. As quirky as this place and its owner may be, at least I'm confident that I can nail the interview portion of the proceedings. Hey, I'm quirky too. I love the Pac-Man and cherry earrings. Oh, excuse me. The who has, who's ever maze that is earring. That's super cool. I've interviewed for a dozen jobs and held down three. I know all the standard questions. What are your greatest strengths? What do you see as your weakness? Once I even had to describe how to assemble a Lego set to prove my communication skills. Considering I ended up washing dishes, I'm not sure why, but... The point is, I'm confident, prepared, ready. If you were a dinosaur, what dinosaur would you be? Pterodactyl, because I like to fly. That's an easy one. It's a very easy one. What? I mean, if somebody asked me that question during an interview, it wouldn't phase me. It, it wouldn't face me. I would just like, oh, that's a cool question. Yeah, I'll answer it. Don't question it. It's a cool question. 
If you were a dinosaur, what dinosaur would you be? Pterodactyl. Because I'm, you know, I, to I would totally, like, pink ranger it up. Right, okay, maybe this wouldn't be a typical job interview after all. No problem, go with the flow. Let's do this. T-Rex, no doubt. Uh, there we go. Pterodactyl soaring through the sky. Brontosaurus, big dude, enjoy salad. No, no. Pterodactyl. I wonder why this is the kindly. Is Pterodactyl the kindly one? Is it just because the Pterodactyl goes with the Pink Ranger? I think that's... I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure if I like that in immediate association. Pterodactyl, soar through the sky. I've always wanted to be a bird, so... Wait, no. All dinosaurs are basically birds. Let me rephrase. I've always wanted to be a flying bird. So pterodactyl, swooping around, catching up drafts, staying way away from meat eaters. Really? How exciting! Even if technically speaking, pterodactyls aren't dinosaurs. I did not know that. I did not know that. What's your favorite snack? What's my favorite snack? I mean, are we talking sweet or savory here? Uh. I mean, I have a ton. I'm just gonna... There's a lot I can list off, so I'm gonna see what the choices are. Snack. If this was a favorite food question, I'd have this down easy. It's tacos. Always tacos. But snacks? Mm. Yeah, I'm not... I don't like how the game... They could have easily just asked us what our favorite food was instead of assuming it's tacos. I do love me some tacos. Don't get me wrong. And I'm a very... I'm a soft taco person as opposed to a hard taco person. Mostly because soft tacos, in my experience, are a lot less messier, less messier than hard tacos, in my experience. So, favorite food is not tacos, but I love tacos. Uh, snacks. When you have pizza on a bagel. Pizza bagel. Say pizza bagels. When pizza's on a bagel, you can have. I. But the thing is, pizza bagels isn't my favorite snack. Hush you. Come now, dear, I don't have all day. After giving it a good thought, well, how could I forget my favorite snack? Tacos are also my favorite snack. A tasty apple with almond butter. Whatever munchies lurk in the depths of the vending machine. Um... I mean, this is not true. Apple with almond butter is good. But I mean, now that I... So nowadays... I should be eating apple with almond butter, which I do like, but I wouldn't say they're my favorite. I like me some hot meals and snacks. I prefer warm and hot snacks versus cold snacks, but I do like me cold snacks. So I'll say tacos are almost my favorite snack. Tacos, and only tacos. There is no other sustenance. I see it, but I wouldn't say that either. Oh well, it's the best answer of them. Apples and almond butter I do like as well. I can see you are a person that knows exactly what they want. And how to get it. How am I doing with my... Okay, okay. So quirky is my prevalent nature. You know what they say, you are what you eat. Next question. Nothing I prepared for has helped me plan for this odd interview. I brace myself for the next one. What assets can you bring to the team? during the inevitable zombie apocalypse. Oh, I love this. I love this. Um, my immediate thought is uh, morale. My immediate thought is I would be the character that... This is kind of in general that I found myself in in most group... group... Um, group uh, dynamics, including at work including at work, I tend to be the heart and the glue. I tend to be the heart and the glue that keeps the team together. That's always been sort of my shtick and sort of what my friends and coworkers tend to associate me with is the one that that's holds the, the heart that glues everyone together. So I have a feeling that's not going to be one of the answers, but we'll see. Maybe it's the kindly answer. Is, it a, is this interview for real or is this a dream? As I look into Francine's deadpan expression, I know she's 130% serious. See, I would not even be, it wouldn't even phase me in real life. Questions like this wouldn't phase me. I would actually just have a huge respect for people who ask these kind of questions during interviews. Because I mean, companies like Google and a lot of startup companies, they do ask these kind of questions. So I wouldn't even flinch. Um, it would not, this would not be a, it would just be a, this is cool, whatever. I'll answer them. Um, 
Don't need to be so dramatic about it. Engineering, I can make stuff. I am an engineer. I am an engineer. Medical, and hey, no lawyers left to sue for a malpractice. Uh, I'm not a medical person. Uh, my parents, my parents are very Asian, and I'm Filipino, and so many, 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 many Filipinos, especially in America, become nurses. Um, that's like a thing. Filipino nurses or doctors. So my mom, my, I come from a family where virtually all of the females in my family, uh, especially on my mom's side of the family, she was one of eight children. Most of them were or are in the medical field and are nurses. So of course my mom wanted me a doctor. Um, it's a very Asian thing for, your, for you to want your kid to be a doctor. And I was like, no, no. The, having the responsibility of people's health and life in my hands, no thanks. I do not need that type of stress in my life. God bless every single person who is gifted and talented and the type of person to be in that line of work because that is a very important and necessary line of work. Not for me. To be honest, I'd probably get eaten by on day one. I mean, engineer, I can make stuff. I am an engineer. I probably, this is probably gonna be true too. Most likely, I'd be true too. Not, most, not because, mostly because I'm too trusting. But I think if I was trying to squeeze in like a little bit more of my real life experiences and personality, I'm an engineer. I can make stuff. I'm essentially MacGyver. I can make anything out of a string, a match, and a screwdriver. Especially if what you want is a screwdriver wrapped in burning string. Good! We'll need someone to build makeshift defenses and think quickly in how, in case we get surrounded. An interventive brain is always a critical role in any survival. One more thing. Why are you here? Why are any of us here, lady? The question is so simple and almost actually relevant to career planning that it takes me off guard. I told you I came about the job offer. You're seeking a job, true. But that doesn't really answer my question, does it? I'm looking, to be honest, lady, I'm looking for love. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm playing this game. I'm looking for love. No doubt. You think my interview questions are a bit silly? No, mm, no, not at all. I like to think of the Funplex as more than a collection of tasks and people to perform those tasks. I agree with you. Most folks my age opening arcades at that time saw it as just another way to make a quick buck. But, well, I saw it as something else. Something more than a way to make a large pile of quarters. I agree with you. I agree with you, lady. And, I expect, you'll find the others working here see it as something more, too. That's cool. I love it. I like it when people are passionate, when my coworkers are passionate about what they do for a living, including myself. Everyone has a dream they're chasing, dearie. And for my friends, it lies within the fun play. Cool, cool. Can I answer the question now and just tell you I'm looking for some, for some lovin', some hot lovin'? No. If all you want is a paycheck, I didn't say that. I can provide that. I didn't say that. But the last fellow in your position, that's all he wanted. And he didn't last long. Yeah. I mean, ideally, you want to be in a job where it isn't just about money. You, you actually are passionate about what you're doing. You have fun with what you're doing. And you enjoy the co-workers. Enjoy the people you work with. So I ask you again. Why are you here? To be honest, I didn't have a better answer than a vague hope that maybe this time I wouldn't lose everything. No, I got a better answer than that. But that's just enough motivation to face each day. No more than that. It wouldn't be enough to answer her question. I need to actually think this through. Um, it's a fun plex. A plex of fun, and I like fun. To be honest, I don't know. Not yet. I'm looking for hope. I haven't had much lately. If I don't dare to take risks, I'll be stuck through silence. I mean, there's no love. There's no looking for love, so I'm just gonna go for I'm looking for hope. I haven't had much lately. Understand I'm not whining or looking for pity, but my life has been a complete mess for over a decade. In and out of jobs, taking what I can get, settling, compromising. I gave up hope on, I gave up on hoping for something better a long time ago. But well, the people in my life who are close to me keep encouraging me to try and chase my dreams. And my hunky partner, my hunky, hunky, um, significant other, life, soul, soulmate, 
That's why I'm here. I'm looking for the answer to your question. But I won't be daydreaming all the time, I promise. In my last job, I was a lifeguard. That takes a lot of focus, uh, not to mention the ability to swim. I'll be just as attentive in helping your, your, your funplex. That perks our attention. Oh my, a rather serious occupation, that. And an unusual step from such troubled waters to a land of make-believe. You enjoyed this role as a lifeguard, I take it? Yes, ma'am. My roommate says she often noticed me smiling after coming home from work. I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> Which makes Francine smile in turn. I can't say I can offer a role with such high stakes, but you'd be surprised at the many ways one can save a life even here. Very well, I'm satisfied. Let's get you to work. I breathe easier at that. Probably the weirdest job interview I've ever had, to be sure, and yet it felt appropriate. Like it was about far more than just filling a slot on the payroll. Francine leads me back to the arcade floor to introduce me to my duties. It only occurs to me now that I forgot to ask exactly what duties this mystery job I'd accepted really involved. Francine gestures to the seat she was occupying previously, a stool behind the prize desk. Oh, how marvelous! Welcome to your new position, Hark! Sitting here, you mean? Sitting here and helping players redeem tickets for valuable prizes. I glance at the wider array of pencil toppers, rubber spiders, and tiny plastic toy cars on display. Well, for prizes, at any rate. It's such a relief. I'd really been stretching myself thin lately, trying to fill in since the position was vacated. If you don't mind me asking, ma'am, why did the last guy who sat here end up quitting? Something about being so bored out of his mind that he felt like jamming one of those 500 ticket plush dolls down someone's throat. Oh, so Poor Dear, he just wasn't cut out for this line of work. Grandson or no, I have no patience for such nonsense. I'm sorry, the l I'm sorry, the last person to work at this desk was your grandson? Anyway, Gavin should be by soon. He'll handle paperwork and all that administrative nonsense. Uh, I, I see she didn't answer the question. Now if you don't mind, all this talking's tired me out some. I'll be back in the back I'll be in the back office if you need me. Oh cool, look at me in my orange outfit. Okay then, I adjusted my seat. I wish my outfit was a little bit better. I'm a bit more of a snazzier dresser than this. I adjusted my seating on these. <laughs> that being said, I do have an orange hoodie, just like that. It's actually brighter than orange, like traffic cone orange. I love it. I adjusted my seating on the semi-comfortable stool, leaning against the desk. Beneath me, a wide array of cheap junk awaited, a cheap junk awaited my attention. I could have lost hope then and there that this job would be even slightly more engaging than being a diner dishwasher, but chose to look on the positive side. I'd be helping kids obtain toys that would become nostalgic memories for years to come. Right? Any minute now. I crave the sweet embrace of death. I've been sitting here for two hours now and nobody's walked up to obtain a novelty fun plux shot glass, or a colored pencil set, or a light up yo-yo. Lunchtime's approaching and so far the only people walking in and out of the arcade are a few stray adults who have no interest in cheap friendship bracelets. Thankfully, my first customer of the day arrives before I start wondering if one of those 500 ticket plushies could really fit so down somebody's, fit down someone's throat. Or maybe not. Nope, just walking right by on me, his head buried in reading some sort of spreadsheet off his tablet. Was he here to play? Doesn't seem like the typical businessman on a break or unwashed and unemployed game aficionado. In fact, I think that's Gavin. I feel like that's based on the context that I've been getting from Miss Francine, I think that's Gavin. He's a snappy dresser, seems a cool dude. Wow, he seems really stuck up. Dang, he's hot. That's my kind of guy. I'm gonna say he's a snappy dresser. Seems a cool dude. Most guys I know are content to toss on a shirt and jeans. Not this guy. Even in an arcade, he's sharp like a linoleum knife. Linoleum knife? Is that a thing? He also is really... He's, he's also pretty darn hot. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. He's pretty hot too. In fact, that rather pointed look he's offering me after doubling back is rather linoleum knifey too. Hold on a minute. Who are you exactly? Cool dude. 
I wonder what would have happened if I didn't refer to him as a cool dude. Would they? Would would this name be different? If it, if so, that would have been a cool touch. 